My name is Benjamin Ebert. I'm a physician scientist at Brigham and Women's Hospital and the Broad Institute in Boston. I'm Lou Stout, and I am the director of the Center for Cancer Genomics at the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland. Doctors Ebert and Stout are among the authors contributing to the Blood Review series on precision hematology. Precision medicine is something that's in some ways not new. In some ways, we've been practicing precision medicine for a long time. Every patient is treated as an individual. Their background, their clinical course is taken into account in customizing their therapy. What has changed and is, is developing right now and is, is really revolutionizing some aspects of clinical care is the advent of clinical genetics. Precision medicine is overtaking everything we do in cancer. Essentially, all the diagnoses that were previously done by a histological examination of the cancer is now being transformed into a precision medicine view of the molecular abnormalities that cause that cancer. And that's very important because often that leads patients to better treatments that are aimed at the precise abnormalities in their cancer cells. We're doing a review series on precision medicine because this is an important moment in hematology where we're integrating more genetic information into the practice of hematology. These relate to the types of genetic assays that are done, the use of genetics for diagnosis and classification, reclassification of diseases according to genetics, ethical issues that are involved, how we use germline information and follow patients who have germline predisposition to disease, uh, how we use genetic information to diagnose pre-malignancies or to follow malignancies over time. These are all questions of relevance to hematology researchers, hematology clinicians. I was invited to submit a paper as a result of my activities in uh, the National Cancer Institute to coordinate genomics. Uh, and largely, I'm in charge of many of our centrally managed programs in genomics. And one of our main initiatives now is to gather data together in what we call the NCI, National Cancer Institute, Genomic Data Commons. This is an effort to get molecular data and clinical data from as many patients with cancer as possible to analyze these data in a uniform fashion and make them freely available to researchers in a, a controlled access database. And by sharing data in this way, we feel that researchers will have a better idea, um, better ways to understand the molecular abnormalities of the cancers, and this will further research in their laboratories to developing new therapies. There have been many, many, many studies around the world looking at the genetic basis of hematologic disease. And in general, people create this data and they publish beautiful papers, and the data resides on some computer or server that is private to them, there's an increasing recognition that if we can put all those data together in the right format in a database that can be accessed, then we have the power to mine that data to make additional insights. The NCI Genomic Data Commons is open to everyone. It's open to researchers in the United States and around the world, anyone who wishes to share their data. The carrot, if you will, for why someone should submit to the Genomic Data Commons is they get to use all the cutting edge tools in bioinformatics that are available in the Genomic Data Commons to analyze their own data. They also get to compare all of their data to all previous data from other patients with cancer. And finally, they get to share their data with the rest of the world. This will um, make the world a better place, make research go faster, as well get their data out and used more often so people understand the contribution they have made. The point of the review series is not to review all of the mutations and their clinical implications, but instead to cover the principles of precision medicine. Ash very much recognizes the need to promote precision medicine, to accelerate our understanding of human genetics, and to assist clinicians in utilizing genetic information for the care of their patients.
We are blessed with some new medicines that are precisely targeted to particular signaling and regulatory abnormalities in cancer cells. And when you use those in the patients that have cancers that are addicted to those regulatory pathways, you can find amazing results where the, the cancer, which seems very resistant to traditional chemotherapy, will melt away in exposure to these drugs. I absolutely think this, this is the tip of the iceberg for the use of genetics in, in hematology. We already have enough information and the ability to use genetics in clinical practice, and, and in some ways, hematology has led this field for a long time. But there is a long way to go, and we are just at the beginning of using, or the potential to use, human genetics to guide the care of patients with hematologic diseases. Thank you.